All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Collection Conundrum. Uh, this is a new show that we're starting here on the channel, and this is going to be kind of a game show about watches. So I've got some friends that are going to be helping me out. And today, yeah, this is kind of the first episode, so we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it doesn't go too rough. Um, but let me bring in uh, Shane, who's going to be co-hosting this with me today. So let's see if we can do this. There we go. Okay. Right, it worked. <laughs> there we go. Welcome, right. Shane. Uh, yeah, so Shane is uh, the host of Relative Time, and yeah, why don't you introduce your channel real quick in case there is anybody who doesn't know, but I think most Probably of my subscribers are yeah, pretty familiar with your channel, but go for it. Yep, yeah, Shane, Relative Time, uh, pretty much focusing on affordable watches, but all sorts of random stuff coming in and just focusing on crazy, you know, real up detail, close shots and spending way too much time editing all together. So Nice. Yeah, and Shane and I, we've been YouTubing for, what, going on three years now? Yeah, four just years? about that. Three or four, something like that. I always lose track. Yeah, but we kind of found each other's channels back when we were, I think I had about 100 subscribers, and you were around the not same. Not much, yeah, not much more. Yeah, so it's been fun seeing both the channels grow and getting to keep in touch through that. But um, I think this is the first time we've ever been live together on anything. Yeah, like I think this. it's the first time I've ever been live. So Yeah, so we've done some... Um, yeah, we've done some double reviews and things where we both reviewed the same watch and done premieres, but first time live like this. Uh, but let me explain the show today, what we're going to be doing. Uh, so we have a third guest that is going to be coming in. Let me get him in here. Uh, so this is Alton from Half Pass Blog. And hey today, guys, Alton, how's it going? Alton is going to be our guest today. So he's going to be presenting a five watch collection and me and Shane will be talking about it. Uh, we'll be evaluating it, and we'll be playing some kind of trivia games and stuff. Um, so there'll be some questions and stuff about the collection. And as we do that, we're going to ask you guys all in the chat to participate as well. Uh, so if there's a question that comes up, feel free to jump in in the chat. Uh, me and Shane are going to be competing for points, so we'll keep track of the score. And uh, at the end of the day, whoever has the most points... Uh, gets to create an Instagram image to give to the loser, and they're going to have to post it to their Instagram. So make sure you guys are also uh, following us on Instagram if you want to see what the... Uh, let me see if I can get our Instagram hands up there. If you want to see what the loser has to post on Instagram. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but Alden, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself real quick, too, and then we'll jump into it. Hey guys, Alton here from Half Pass Blog. Great to be on the show. Dave and I have been friends for a while, and I'm also a fan of his. And I've been a big fan of Shane since I got into watches just over two years ago. I think I've gone back and watched every video you've done, buddy. So love both <laughs> your channels. Yeah. Someone's and really so it's a real pleasure. <laughs> the first first few were a little rough there man but that's okay yeah. i'm right i'm still doing my first one so yeah, you're, you're still in the rough. rough rough period so yeah yeah <laughs> that's it so i've got a little uh channel half past blog and then on instagram the same all one word yeah. half past blog yeah now you started your channel last year right or was it 2020 you started the youtube I channel started instagram, my been instagram, up for a instagram while. two years ago yesterday okay. and i all started right. the Congratulations. channel or, thank you around this time in 2020 but I didn't do my first actual video till the end of February of last year. So. All right. Sorry, I was reading, got distracted by the chat there for a second. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, okay, so Alton, we're gonna have you guys, you share a five watch collection, but a minute, let me ask you a couple of questions to jump into it. Uh, yep. So first question about your, uh, first question about your collection. Uh, we're going to talk about the price tier of it. So let me pull this up. Okay, so we have five price tiers that we came up with. Uh, yeah. So which one does your collection fit in that you're going to be showing? It's five watches, total mm -hmm. estimated value of them. If you add them all up, about how much is this going to cost? Uh, bearing in mind that it's a five watch collection, not a one watch collection, I'm going to be in the high end category, $2,000 to $5,000. Okay, $2,000 to $5,000. All right, so now for you guys in the chat, the final question of sort of the game part, um, me and Shane are going to try and offer Alton a watch to say, would you trade your entire collection for this watch? So as he shares his collection, um, you guys in the chat, be thinking of something up as well that you might want to offer. 
Um, so it has to be within that price range. So it has to be within the, uh, let's see if we can get this over here, into the $2,000 to $5,000 range. Uh, so me and Shane will be sharing our offers of what we think Alton might be interested in a watch in that range that would compete with his entire five watch collection. But then you guys, when we get to that part, make sure you're spamming the chat. Uh, offering suggestions as well, because he might take one of your choices over ours, but we'll get into that. Uh, okay, so next question. What is kind of the theme of this collection that you're gonna be sharing with us? So I have more than five watches and you didn't really set any parameters on which ones to choose. So I kind of chose, if if I had to go with five watches and I, I couldn't buy another one, these would be the five that I would choose. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, good. Okay. So with that in mind, uh, the next thing that we're going to do, me and Shane are going to try and guess the watches that you're going to present. Okay. But before we do, let's get a couple of hints other than that. So we know what the value of the collection is. Um, we know kind of a little bit about why you chose these ones and we've been stalking your Instagram and your yeah. YouTube and Facebook and everything to try and figure out what you're going to show us today. So we've got some, some clues there, but let me ask you a couple of other things. Um, well, where, where are you right now? Where do you live? Where'd you grow up? Tell us a little bit about that. I am in Ontario, Canada. I live in a small town currently. Grew up in a small town, lived in Toronto for a while, and uh, I'm living the good life out in the, the boonies. Live right on Georgian Bay, which is beautiful. All right. And, you know, if the watch blogging thing falls through and doesn't work out, do you have a backup <laughs> job? What's your, what's your plan if that doesn't, you know, make it full time? Or what, what are you doing for real? I'm a bouncer at a bar in town. Okay, yeah. Actually, no. I, <laughs> I don't tell anyone, but I'm a Presbyterian minister. All don't right. Do that against me. That's okay. almost like a bouncer. So, yeah. Sometimes you get fulfilled. <laughs> For the much, Lord. Right? <laughs> Actually, my main music guy was a bouncer at oh, our local go. bar. He's about six foot six and about 400 okay. pounds, and you don't want to mess with this guy. So if we ever get a rowdy crowd at church, we know who to turn to. Perfect. Okay, uh, so one more. Oh, so uh, hobbies besides watch collection. Do you got any other hobbies besides watch collecting? I used to be big into toys and Transformers, okay. specifically anything 80s. was born in 76, so. Uh, Those Legos Lego. behind you? I think you see the Simpsons up here. I can't. Oh, there, there. Nice. Uh, what other hobbies? I, I've got two kids, so my hobbies are really being the person who hears dad about a billion times a day. Yeah. yeah, that's a pretty, pretty busy hobby. Yeah. Okay. One more question. So when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a baseball player, third baseman for the Toronto Blue Jays. I wanted to be okay. Kelly Gruber because I was in high school in the early nineties when the Jays won the world series back to back and now they suck, but we're getting back on top. I'm a, I'm a Dodger fan. So I'm pretty happy right now. Ah. We finally, uh, finally did it. Grew up, uh, yeah, reliving the glory days from 89, but it's mm. good to be back on top. Um, okay, so with those kind of clues in mind, uh, you guys go ahead and uh, in the chat, go ahead and start giving us your guesses for some watches you think uh, Alton is going to share us share with us in just a minute. Uh, but me and Shane are going to give our guesses for things that we think Alton might show. So why don't I give it over to Shane first? Uh, yeah, Shane, what, give, give three guesses, and if you get any of them right, you get one point for each one that you get right. All right, let me pull up my uh, screen. All right, there you go. All right, so first off, after uh, Facebook stalking and Instagram, not, Instagram stalking and checking out your web page or your YouTube, uh, the Alpinas Pilot Star Timer, because uh, you had a lot of photos of this on Instagram, so I think it's relatively new for you. So that I think is definitely one. Um, another shot of it. And kind of as a side note, this is one actually I've been wanting to get because I've actually been looking at Alpina a lot lately. Um, the, it's a heritage star timer, just kind of a cool look. So next one is the uh, Boliva A15 Pilot. Um, so I think I saw an Instagram post. You said this was one of your favorite ones for the year. Um, actually a really cool one. I didn't know this was one existed. Um, and then third... The SRPB61K1. Not sure what the nickname for this one is. And this, I actually uh, went through a lot of your videos. Not a lot, but some of the ones you're doing were kind of hands-on stuff and kind of noticed you wearing this on your wrist on a few of them. So that's mm -hmm. my third guess. The nickname for that is the Seiko Khaki Navi Timer. 
Okay. Because it looks like a cross between a Navitimer and a, and a Hamilton khaki. Cool. All right. Okay, so those are Shane's three guesses. Let me go ahead and pop mine up. So here's the three I'm going for. And we'll see. I've been... Um, yeah, I've been following Alton's channel for a while, so but I didn't I didn't pick the uh, Alpina, but after I saw Shane do that one, I, I think that's a good one to guess. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the Bolova A15. Um, I know Alton's really been into that one for a while. Um, Hamilton Navy Pioneer and the Seiko Monster. I you know I tried not to go look at your uh, Instagram too much, so I'm not I might have got the model wrong on this one. I know you just got a fairly new monster, but I figured you're probably going to put a diver up there. So I'm guessing mm. that one. Um, but yeah, these are, these are all watches that I really want to. So yeah, I think so the Junior's way I asking, what are we supposed to do? I think what you guys should do is go to my Instagram page real quick, take a skim through and post up your top three. Picks. Yeah. Yeah. Just see if you can guess what, uh, what Alton's about to share with us. Cause he's going to show. So, uh, me and Shane both made three guesses, and now Alden's going to share his five watches. We will get one point for each uh, correct answer if we got any. If you if you didn't pick any of our watches, then um, we're okay. not getting any points for that. Nope, wrong one. <laughs> I've got a fly in here. It's January. I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> Okay, so with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump over, and Alden, you're going to go ahead and show us your five watches. We'll see if me and Shane got any of them right. So Okay, you guys did pretty well. You didn't get them all right, but you did pretty well. So uh, can you pop up that first picture for me, Dave? Yeah, let me see. So I've got – Alton has sent me his picks. I've got them right here. All right, let's see what we got. Number one. Oh, there you go. Okay, so there's one point for Shane right there, <laughs> right off the bat. Alpina, Star Timer, 40 millimeters. I just got this bad boy in December, and I absolutely love it. So it had to be on the list, absolutely. It's, um, it's just got a nice, crisp, clean aviation-type dial. I've thrown it on this red ru rubber strap, and I love it. Um, a little disappointed with... The accuracy, I'm getting about 15 seconds a day. It's got a, a modified Sleda SW200 in it. So maybe I'll get that looked at. Um, yeah, great watch. Wears well. Very slim. Slides under a cuff really easily. Very legible. Big crown. Love this watch. Very cool. Yeah, I, re I really like that white with the black outline around the numbers. It's so mm -hmm. clean and yeah, easy to see. And a ton of AR on the sapphire crystals. So in the nice. sunlight, sometimes it almost looks blue. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. There's number one. One point for Shane so far. Yeah. Let's see. Let's go over to number two. All right. Okay. One for me. <laughs> there you go. Yep. The Belova A15 Pilot. And this is a... It's not a remake, it's more of a reinterpretation because the original watch is over 70 years old. It was given to World War II pilots, mostly in North America, uh, a little bit in France, a little bit in Asia, and I think the UK. And there were only 500 made given to pilots to test out. For whatever reason, they never went into production. So those original 500 are really hard to find. I believe this is the third reinterpretation that Belova has put out. And it's my favorite. It's 42 millimeters. It's got three crowns, as you can see. It's got two inner rotating bezels. That's the second and third crown. Hmm. And you use it for calculations. Uh, mostly for me, it's calculating how long my wife is in the grocery store, which she said she'd be five minutes. The uh, record is 90 minutes. And uh, it's uh, just a, a beautiful watch. It's 14 mil thick, so... Yeah, and Isaiah Isaiah's on there. He he bought one because of my my unboxing video. Great watch, love it. And I threw this on a Strap Mill Canada strap right here. And all the watch pillows are from Vario. And I bought them myself. There's no connection there for any profit. But yeah, I would the, uh, high frequency quartz on this one. So this has uh, it's kind of disappointing. The downside to this watch, everything mm -hmm. about it is beautiful. 
but this one does not have that high frequency quartz, which actually would be kind of nice. Instead, it has a um, an everyday. Oh, I just blanked. Um, Is it Miota? Miota, thank you. It's got a it's got a Miota movement, which is not your your typical 800 series. It is an 800 series, but it's actually one for whatever reason. I don't know why they used it, but one that's meant for like a skeletonized watch. Okay. So, but it hacks. It hands wine, hand accurate. wines. Okay. Um, it's keeping great time under 10 seconds a day. So, nice. yeah. Yeah, this is one I've really been tempted to get. Like I've almost picked it up a couple of times. I probably will eventually get to it. Uh, yeah, I love that dual inner rotating crown. That thing looks, or bezel, that looks really cool. And because you can use the, yeah, uh, it's got it's what it's a twelve hour scale and a sixty minute scale, so you can use it for tracking hours or a second time zone or yeah, all kinds of stuff. It, it I, there's just something about it. It has charm. It, it might be my favorite watch in the collection. It's not the most expensive. It doesn't have a Swiss movement, but it's just a great watch. I just love the sum of its parts. Okay, we got John in the chat begging for a wrist check. We're going to do that a little bit later on, so hang on. Um, that's one of the things that we're going to have to guess about Alton is uh -huh. what he's actually wearing. So when he does that, we'll uh, we'll do our wrist checks as well. Okay, let's to move on to the number black three. hat valet. The high frequency quartz does have a smooth sweep. I've got one in the watch box. I can show you later. All right. So I was I almost picked your uh, Casio, so I'm glad I didn't because it looks like you went with the uh, yeah different G Shock. I'm working on a video, which is better, the Casio or the Square G. And um, I won't give it away, but for this video, I picked the Square no. 5600, the black on black. Now, I just, I just think that if I couldn't buy any other watches, I had five watches for the rest of my life. I wanted and I needed something this durable, this rugged. And yeah. Dave, you did a video on torture testing one of these, didn't you? So, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know I, yours not, was more it's colorful. It's completely bulletproof, yeah. <laughs> it, it can it can be broken but it's pretty close and uh i mean waterproof anytime i'm out in the yard doing anything this is what's on my wrist so i had to include it in that number three spot the iconic square g-shock all right very nice okay let's go over to number four okay interesting okay the reason i included this now if your viewers aren't familiar with this. This is an Orient Defender. It's a field watch. This model is no longer in production. They've made a so Gen, Gen 2. One. Okay. Yep, this is a Gen 1. And the reason I included this is it was my first mechanical watch mm. just over oh, really? two years ago. Yeah, and so it's kind of what got me going down that mechanical watch route. So maybe I should throw it in the garbage and walk away. <laughs> I don't know, because <laughs> you all know that this is a rabbit trail. You'd be foolish to go down this watch collecting rabbit trail, but it's a great watch, hundred meters water resistant, screw down crown, uh, symmetry to the dial, even though it's asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. I just love this watch. I wear it all the time, especially if I'm in the woods. Oh yeah, I didn't realize that this one had a screw down crown. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I reviewed uh, was it one of the cream ones a long time ago. I'm actually looking to maybe get one of the Gen Two ones soon, just to check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the Gen 2, they moved the crown over to the 3 o'clock, right? Yeah, and I think the sub-dial goes down to, uh, more closer to the 6 or like the 5.30 or something like that. Okay, mm -hmm. I like the uh, the pillow that you chose for that one too. Matches the strap well. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All right, number 5, let's see what we got. Okay, all right, another point for me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been keeping score, but I think you yeah. might be close. I think, I think yeah. you got I got 2. I got, you got you got, do we both get two? Yeah, I think we both had the A15. You know what? I can do a tiebreaker if you pull one of the watch box behind lot, me. We got a lot of points to go through. Yeah. Okay. Right. So this is the Hamilton Navy Pioneer, and it is 43 millimeters, and it wears every bit of that 43. It's a big presence on the wrist. And... Um, I just love this watch. It was my first Swiss watch, so it has sentimental value to me. So I don't want to get rid of it. I You can wear it with shorts and a t-shirt. I can wear it preaching, wear it nice with a jacket. I just love this watch. The uh, wire lugs are fantastic. It's crisp. It's clean. I've always gravitated towards deck watches. So in the number five slot with 
100 meters of water resistance as well is the Hamilton Navy Pioneer. Cool. Uh, this one I really like too. Like, so you, I got the, uh, the Laco Casablanca, which is another deck watch. Um, I love that one, which was cheaper than this one, but yeah, like, yeah. I think you got this one shortly after I got that one. And I really like this one too. <laughs> Maybe we can so this trade. Has, you know? <laughs> this has the, um, H 10 movement, which is basically yeah, a modified nice. ETA and it, it keeps five seconds a day. doesn't matter what I do with it. It's five seconds a day. Yeah. Fantastic. The, the wine is very smooth. 80-hour power reserve. I can put it down on Friday and pick it up on Monday. Although, nice. I don't think I wear a watch more than once a week, so that never happens. But Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the deck watch is a... Um, yeah, that's kind of an underappreciated one. No one ever talks about those, but a lot of the major brands put one out, and they're yeah. really classy-looking watches. Uh, they're, not, they're not on most people's the radar. radar. A lot no. of people don't buy them, but every time I post it, people are like, what is that? I like yeah. that. Yeah, it's got, it, it looks really elegant, but then it's still, yeah, it feel it doesn't feel like a dress watch quite. It's, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more, mm. I don't know, it's got that military or nautical heritage behind it too. I think it's a really cool blend. I like to wear it. I'm wearing like a nice pastel golf shirt. I'm in khakis. I'm sitting by the river on a deck and they're, bringing me drinks and appetizers boats are going by that's the watch i wear for that all right okay so there are alton's five watches so we're going to play a couple of games now and this is another chance for you guys to follow along in the chat right now the points are tied with me and shane each having two points and we're going to get into asking alton some questions about his watches so flash those back up as we go and uh, yeah, so as we go through, uh, yeah, again, you guys down in the chat, go ahead and spam your answers. Try and keep track of your own scores. You can see if you can beat us, but uh, we'll, go, we'll go through it. Uh, so first question, and give us a couple seconds to write it down. Uh, so first question is going to be, uh, Alton, what is your favorite watch out of those watches that you showed us? You kind of, you kind of might have uh, spoiled that one already a little bit uh in your presentation but uh so you guys wrote like down your kind answers of, kind of attached off so we're gonna write them down right now so don't tell us yet favorite right, so watch us... or most sentimental favorite what's the favorite 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 watch favorite watch all right well favorite watch not yet not yet, not yet we're gonna we're oh, gonna okay, show our okay. answers first wait till we show okay. our answers and then you tell us okay 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 so we're playing for points here <laughs> okay yeah, are you in the honeymoon phase with that Alpino? No, okay, let's see. Okay. All right, here's what I'm going for. That's an Alpino. All right, answer, Alton. Hold on, I'm chatting with people. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, you said the A15, Shane says the Alpino. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Decision time. Pick one. The the Alpina is the better watch. Okay. It's not looking good for me. But is but there a but, but here? But the Belova is my favorite. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next question uh, is, let's see. Shout out to Chris. Question. He helped me buy that watch. Well, he didn't help me buy it, but I chat him up about it after watching his video. Okay, so next question is, what is the total estimated value of your collection? Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, guess that in the chat. Total estimated value of the watches that uh, Alton just shared. So give us about 10, 20 seconds to think that up. Pull it up back. Yeah, up let me see. Maybe I can do this. Let's see if you guys can see that. Yeah, good enough. I might jump through, cycle through again. And we're going off of MSRP. So and do I did it's not pick my top most expensive watches. I picked a, a variety oh. there. Okay. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to guess. Okay. 
Are we doing price is right rules? Go over. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, so I'm gonna go. when calculating this, I bought everything in Canadian. So oh no, I, <laughs> yeah, you gotta convert that. Yeah, that's what so I had to. Stand a chance. I had to actually go back and look up MSRP and uh, in U.S. dollars and in U.S. sites to try to figure that out. Okay. All right, price is right rules. So if you go over, I don't you're have out. An exact well, we can both go over. Okay. <laughs> you know, okay, we'll just... okay. All right. Answers. And are we doing? Are we doing MSRP? Yeah, we'll do yeah, MSRP. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm going to say two thousand seven hundred eighty-three. Two seven nine nine. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Come on. Under. <laughs> under. I'm going to go with Shane because I think it's just a hair over that. Wait. Over. Okay. Oh, so they're both there. Darn it. Okay. Well, I think okay. it, when I calculated, it was closer to three thousand. But okay, all right. I we mean, it depends it, where you yeah, go. Shane beat me. Okay. All right, that puts us tied at three to three. Okay, next question. Uh, let's see. All right, uh, what is Alton's favorite watch brand? Favorite brand. Okay, I'll take a guess on that. And does it have to be in the collection he presented, or just total? Total. To total. Let's say, okay. yeah. So, you know, you kind of infer from the collection, but I, it could be maybe he didn't pick a, I don't know. I, would you, would Seiko be your favorite brand, but you no. didn't show a Seiko? <laughs> that would be weird. Could it possibly, oh, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Take a guess. Okay. I'm so favorite branded of what I own Wait. or favorite brand yeah. in general. Uh, just fa your favorite watch brand in general. Do I have to have owned any of them at any time? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yes. I guess. Uh, oh, okay. So, like, what is it gonna be like Rolex or something? Is your favorite? Yeah. Okay. Let's say let's say your favorite brand that you have owned. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, you might not really know. That narrows it down quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. You're a window shopper. Okay. All right. Answers. I'm gonna go with Hamilton. Seiko. Seiko. Okay. Hamilton. Ah, All right. Hamilton. I really like Seiko, but those I QC got... issues are just driving yeah. me nuts. Yeah. You would have put a Seiko in your collection. I would have had a hard time. That The monster I have is absolutely beautiful. It's flawless. And if they were all like that, then yeah, I'd yeah. be in for it. But All right, I got two more questions. Um, okay, so let's do a wrist check for me and Shane first, because the next question is, which watch is Alton wearing right now? And it should be one of the five you presented, right? Yeah, it's one of the five. Okay. And I'm wearing a sweater uh, to mask okay. it. With a sweater? Okay, good. I thought that was like a clue. You're trying to match the watch to your sweater. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So wrist check. I am wearing uh, Zello's black tip. Oh, nice. Teal version. Yeah. So I'm testing some new straps right now. So I've got it on a strap from North. This is a single pass canvas strap. Cool. Probably hard to see, but let's see if anyone can guess what that is. Oh wow, uh, that's a the, pretty rare one there. Yeah, the Akura Wayfair. Yeah, red that, dial, right? Went into production. Did they ever? Did he? He was going to try and restart that, wasn't he, or do something um, different? Is he kind of out now? To, I haven't heard from, from him in a while, so I think he kind of. Yeah, every once in a while, he would kind of send me some stuff talking to him um, on Instagram, but I haven't heard anything in a bit, so. Don't think it's coming back, at least not anytime soon. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, well, we're guessing your thing. Alton, uh, if if you could pick a brand that you didn't own, what was, what's your favorite? Like, you think it's your favorite brand, but you really don't know. Just going off Instagram and YouTube, I'd go with Omega. Mm. Omega, okay. Love what they do. Okay, uh, Longines is a great one. I love military and aviation watches. They have right. some great I might stuff. Have to, I might have to rethink my um, my Grail watch that I'm going to be offering you. Mm -hmm. Then I have a couple uh, of yeah. <laughs> fishing for answers here. Okay, so which well, one is Alton wearing? Let's go. Let's write this. I'm going to write that down. Alton, say something interesting while we think up uh, answers right, to your question. Okay. <laughs> something. Someone else interesting. I, I'm watching the comments and I'm enjoying what you guys are saying here. Uh, one guy said he has to return half the Seikos he buys. <laughs> yep, that <laughs> happens. I bought a G-Shock. I just did an unboxing of a G-Shock, and it had dirt under the dial, like a white stuff. 
Uh, Janko says, if it's Canadian, it's going to be 194,000. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Okay, I got my answer. Okay, so what is Alton wearing now? Guess that. I'm going with the bowl of it. Alpina. Okay. Okay. Oh, wrist, wrist check, Alton. Oh, guys. Shane, I'm so, so sorry. Ah. <laughs> Did I get it? All right. I, I actually was going to wear the Alpina, but I thought the red strap might give it away. So there you go. I do love that Alpina. It's my latest purchase, and I am wearing it all the time. Okay. And my notes just crashed. Let me pull those back up. Yeah. I think that has it at, at the score three to four with me winning. Is that right? right. Almighty Ohm, I have a, an extensive movement collection. No, I don't. Not that there's anything wrong with that. All right, last question. And here's the hard one. How many straps does Alton own? Alton, how oh. many straps? And don't give it a list. Write it down. So guess that in the chat. How many straps do you guys think Alton owns? And if, if you watch my channel or yeah, see me on Instagram, you know I love me some straps. So same thing. If you go over the number, so you want, you want to guess under, right? Price is right rules again. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with. Okay. I got mine. 72, Gareth. 72, good guess, Gareth. Is good saying. guess. All right. Let's get All some right. more guesses in there. 54, 35. Uh, Isaiah, come on, Urban Ninja. You should know better. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Yeah, Evan, you are so right. Okay. Let's okay. see your guesses, guys. I'm going go 64. 64? 32. <laughs> I feel bad now. <laughs> okay. So I own 25 watches, which I didn't okay. know. Actually, I had to count. Um, and that doesn't include... The kids or wife's watches. So there's 25 straps on those watches alone. Oh, I guess right? that. Do you want to, do you want to maybe I'm feel, I'm revise your estimates, that. gents? No, no, we're good. We're good. You're good. Okay. <laughs> so like, bes yeah. besides I'm not going 25... to beat the chat probably, but I think I'll beat Shane at least. <laughs> <laughs> 986. Peter, 900? 988. <laughs> okay, I have 25 watches with straps on them in two containers. I have 83 other straps. Oh, 83, okay. <laughs> so I'm coming okay. in at just under 100. In total. Under 100, okay. Yep. All right. So I guess I'm that's point, in. Dave. Mm -hmm. Another point for me. Puts me up five to three. How, um, how many guys in the chat show us how many of you have more than 98 straps? <laughs> Everybody's going to have to go start counting now. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. I just got like yeah. tackle boxes full of straps. Yeah, got right just a couple That's a rabbit hole you do not want to yeah. go down. Yeah. Okay, I, so we're going to move into the portion of the show where we're going to do a little bit of a collection evaluation where Shane and I will talk uh, just what we think about Alton's five watches here. So we'll go ahead and scroll through them again. Uh, and yeah, uh, so first we'll just do kind of a general overview of what we think of what he's got the ones we like and stuff. And then after that, we're going to suggest one watch that we think is our favorite from the collection. And then one watch that we think he should get rid of and buy something different. So you guys be thinking about that in the chat too, um, making the same recommendations. So we'll be going through Alton's five watches. Um, you guys pick your favorite one out of this list and then also pick your, uh, your least favorite and something that you would replace it with. We'll try and help Alton out as he goes and then uh yeah it should be fun so shane why don't uh, i'll turn it over to you what, what do you guys what do you think of alden's collection here really cool really some unique pieces um ones you don't necessarily see very often especially that boliva and the alpina um the boliva is really cool the alpina is just a nice simple clean white dial but just really well made um love the orange strap on it and then the uh boliva is just unique i hadn't even seen it before might be one I might look into at some point. And Hamilton, the uh, Navy Pioneer, that's actually one I've been looking at for a while. Um, love Hamilton in general. And the Defenders, it's a great watch. I mean, I have video on it myself. And G-Shock is hard to go wrong with. I mean, it's just a great collection overall. Yeah, I feel like you have a real kind of almost military theme going here. You've yeah. got a, 
a Navy watch. You've got this is kind of a field watch, but I don't know. I the, the Defender's always been kind of an odd field watch for me, like which category it fits into. It's not really like a military field watch, I don't think. But yeah, it's, I guess it'd be more of like a sporting field watch. But the hands, very, it feels, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting spot. But then, yeah, this, about I don't that know. about that Orient is it runs at minus one second a day. It's my most accurate nice. watch. Right. Does this one have hacking hand winding? Uh, it no, does not. It it's old school. Not. Yeah, that's why the, the Gen 2 does. Okay. That's the yeah. only kind of weak point of it. Yeah. So yeah, so that would be a point against it for like if it was a military watch. You got to have yeah. hacking for that. Uh, but this one again feel feel like very kind of militaristic look here with the all black stealth, and then you got an yeah. old school pilot's watch and a new mm -hmm. school pilot's watch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I think that's I pretty loves cool. what I, I loves. Like, yeah, I like that that theme tying together. I'm kind of I think getting more into it. like I've I, I think it's really interesting that you didn't have a dive watch in here. Yeah. Like I would have, um, I, I thought like, so, so I picked the monster. I thought you would have, you would have at least picked a dive watch, but I kind of yeah. like that because I don't know. Like, I feel like I have to have a dive watch in my collection mm -hmm. just because yeah, everybody has to have a dive watch, but I don't know if I would really necessarily want it over other watches. Yeah. Um, I almost put the monster in there, but I couldn't think of one that I would want to bump off the list for yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I you've S got you've got the an SKX. It's great, but I mean, yeah. it it's not at the same time. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a, a samurai, which I quite love. Yeah, so I think so, your G Shock is kind of your dive watch in this collection. Yeah, for the most part. Right? I mean, that's if you, if what you did I need to, my, yeah. if you did need to go in the water or something, you've got a G Shock that'll get you uh, get yeah. you out of there. Uh, I don't know. Is there any? Do you ever go? Are you close to the ocean where you are? I Probably have a camper on the lake, so I go lake, swimming okay. all summer. Yeah, so you could go there. Yeah, so you get something. Because would now would you swim in any of these other watches? Alpine's got 100 meters of water resistance. Would you take I'd that? I swim in, in the Al. I swim in the Alpine if I didn't have a choice. I mean, okay. <laughs> when your MSRP is a thousand dollars, yeah, I, I'm yeah. like you guys. I'm not a Rolex dude who's rolling in money. So right. Well, to how me, many that's Americans actually money. see the water? Like I, I yeah exactly. Water. I would just leave it in the watch case and throw on something. I've swam with my SKX and my Samurai. I swim mm. with those guys. Yeah. Yeah, but there you go. Uh, most of them have a hundred meters water resistance. The Hamilton does. The Defender does. The Alpina does. Two hundred for the the Casio. Does the, the Navy Pioneer is... have a screwed in crown? Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one to try and pick. Okay, so let's go over um, favorite one. Chat two. What you, guys, what's your guys' favorite watch that Alton has in his collection here? Go ahead and start getting that out. And what we do, I'll turn it over to Shane and let you pick your favorite one and why. All right, as I was taking so, a drink. <laughs> Almighty Ohm says he'd replace the G-Shock with a Vostok or an Orient. Which ones, oh, buddy? Let go. us know. Um, can you go back? So all five of them. Or just click through real quick. Oh, so gosh. favorite one, I think, would definitely be the Hamilton Navy Pioneer. Um, just because I love Hamilton. Um, one I've been looking at specifically. So that's just... And I don't really have a deck watch currently. I've had a, someone in the past and mm -hmm. went up selling it. Um, you want me to go over the one I'd suggest get rid of? or you uh, go Let me get... Yeah, I'll go over my favorite first. Yeah, this is a hard one for me to pick too. Like probably my favorite would also be the Navy Pioneer, but again, I already have the Laco, so I kind of already have a deck watch. Um, the one that I'm most interested, like that I would most likely pick up, is that Bolova. Uh, this is one that yeah I, I want to get, and it's pretty affordable too. Like if you're looking, it's, I think Joma Shop has it for under four hundred dollars, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think it's about three fifty. Yeah, MSRP is, is really overpriced on these. Right. Yeah, with a lot of these. But yeah, on Joma like Shop, I know you can pick it up. Too. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. I just placed an order from Joma Shop, and this was almost one that I got. Mm. Um, yeah, so maybe next next time I do that, I might pick it up. But yeah, I'm going to, I'll go with that one. Yeah, I mentioned I might get invaded by dogs. So. <laughs> <laughs> got some, some more co hosts coming yeah, in. Yeah, they're like, hey, pay attention to me. Yeah. Pay attention to me. Yeah, the one thing, like, so. The one thing that I wish the Bulova had, and I know this is terrible, but I wish it had a date. Um, that would, I, it would mm. probably ruin the dial. But yeah. uh, if it if it had a date, 
so you'd have a date, you would have basically a GMT, you could use it for a poor man's GMT mm. and a timing, you know, you, you would hit basically every complication I would need in a daily watch. And it looks really mm -hmm. cool too. And it's got a cool way of doing it. I love that that dual crown thing is something you don't ever see. So it's kind of a unique way to bring those complications say, in. I will say my buddy Isaiah down there will agree with me that those crowns get turned really easily. Oh, okay. So, so they're not yeah, screwed down just the main one. They're not screwed down. The main was one isn't screwed down either. So you would not want to use it for a GMT because you'd knock it out of caliber. Hmm. It's good to know. Okay. Uh, Shane, one watch of Alton's that you would get rid of and replace it with something else. Ah, uh, that's a tough one. Um, what would you guys offer personally, me? Something around three thousand dollars for all we'll five get to of that. these. Um, I'll say replacing just the one. Um, for me personally, I think it would be the G-Shock. But it's like you always should have a G-Shock because it's yeah. kind of like your go-to beater watch whenever you're worried about anything. So if you had to get rid of one of them, I would probably, and this is hard to say because I love Orient, would be yeah. the Defender. Um, if you had to pick one, what I would replace it with. Um, that's a good question. You already kind of got the military thing going down, unless you wanted another military, in which case I've got maybe lots like of those. A, Here's a Hamilton uh, GMT military, like the Glacian Airman. That'd kind of mm. go along with the you know aviation yeah. theme. Would love that. Love the Airman. Yeah. So for me, and yeah, go ahead and throw the chat into you guys. What do you guys think uh, Alton should get rid of and replace it with? If this was his only five watches, if he was going to hone this collection a bit more. Um, yeah, so again, like personally, I would, I would, the Orient would be the one that speaks the least to me, but I know this one has sentimental value to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that always makes it hard to throw that out. You know, if it's your first automatic watch, you know, you probably would not want to ditch it and get something else. Uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, that, that would be the one that personally I would jump. I would, I would dump that one and get something different. Uh, but you know, if it wasn't that one, yeah, I guess it would have to be the G shock would be the other one. But again, I'm, I'm kind of in the same position. It's like, if you're only gonna have five watches, uh, G shock is probably gonna be one of the most useful ones that you would wear. So yeah, I would be down to one of those two. Um, I would replace it with like, so I think you're lacking here in this would be either a dive watch or a true dress watch. Mm -hmm. One of those two. Or something so, that can double as a dress watch. Yeah, um, I mean, so can, the, the Navy Pioneer can kind of fill that spot. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I, th I can see you using that as a dress watch. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, just like, so me, like, but yeah, I think the Alpina is kind of similar to the Pioneer. You got the white kind of classic look, uh, numerals and all that. And then again, you have a really heavy kind of military bent to the collection. Um, so I might throw in maybe like a Hamilton jazz master, uh, for mm -hmm. a dress watch, something like that would be cool. Yep. Um, to so visit is one that I really like. So those are ones that I'm keeping yep. on. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Or go with a dive watch. Uh, but again, you know, I, I kind of like the idea of having a collection without a dive watch. That's yeah. kind of a, yeah. a bold move there. And if the other one I would suggest would be like the, the champagne khaki King that I have. Cause for me, that's one thing I love about it is cause it can kind of almost be a dress watch, but it's still, you know, kind of a military mm -hmm. one. Yeah, look to let's it. Look at, let's look at some of the chat suggestions. Black Hat Velvet suggests get rid of the Alpina and get a ball. So uh, move up market a little bit there. I'm gonna make a trade with uh, the watch this guy because he's gonna trade me his Zenith for my Hamilton. I'm looking forward to that. I joke. We have that would not be a good trade. I would I would take that trade. Uh, what else do we got? We got uh, Mario saying he'd replace the Hamilton with the H Hamilton Day Date Pilot, which, yeah, that would fit into your collection. Then you'd have three pilot mm -hmm. watches there, but that's a cool pilot's yep. watch. I have uh, their Day Date Field Watch. Uh, what else do we got for suggestions? We got Isaiah saying go a little smaller on your Hamilton. There is part of me that wished I'd gotten the 40 millimeter version with the sub second style for the Hamilton. Yeah, that's be a, a little that's bit a dressier, a little smaller. Roar of the Tiger suggesting <laughs> throwing in a combat sub or a GMT. Yeah, complications wise, that's another thing. So you've got what three three handers in there, and then 
Oh, yeah, you don't have any chronographs or GMTs nope. or anything like that. So maybe moving something like that in would be a good, uh, good way to go too. Okay. All right, so this is going to move us into the final round of the game time. So let's see if we can pull up the score of what we've got so far. I think we got this correctly. I am up, up to five to three, I think. Let me pull it up. But that's okay because the last uh, question is worth two points. So Shane still has a chance to come back here. So we'll throw that up. So final, final round is going to be we are going to offer – uh, Alton, a watch that has to be between two thousand and five thousand dollars, and Alton will decide whether he's willing to take that watch in exchange for his entire five watch collection, give them all up. Um, so yes, down in the chat too, you guys, what 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 do you think would be Alton would take in exchange for his whole collection? Your collection value is around three thousand dollars. You were saying, so we can give you up to five thousand. So that should give you some leeway to feel good about ditching all five of them for this. Uh, but yeah, let's go for it. Uh, and yeah, this one is worth two points. So currently I'm up five. Oh, wait, I got the points wrong. Currently we're tied. No, we're I was going to say. I'm, I'm winning. <laughs> let, me, let me fix this. Okay. All right. Currently, there we go. I'm up five to three. Uh, but yeah, two points for this one. So Shane has a chance to come back and uh, let's do it. All right. Uh, so Shane, let's see your... Um, Let's see your offer. What are you going to give Alton for his five watch collection? Again, uh, yeah, see, the chat's got an advantage now because they've been listening to him. He's probably he's totally going to take the, the chat. All right. Okay. So when I was thinking about stuff, since you do have definitely a like military kind of vibe going and definitely a pilot's watch, so I thought the two uh, obvious ones yeah. would be like a Navitimer or a Speedmaster, mm -hmm. but I think those go over the budget we were talking about. And kind of wanted to pick something that maybe a little different. So looking around, I thought about the Sin 903, which is very kind of Navitimer-like, but still very kind of high-end, very nicely made, German-made chronograph, kind of which is something you're missing as well. Kind of gives you everything. Um, another nice shot of it. Yeah, I think there's a couple different. Nice. I was looking at Sin too. I haven't seen this particular one, but that's a cool yeah. looking one. Yeah, and the other option I had just to show you, but I think this is the one I would pick, um, was I never saw this one before, the Space Chronograph. Really oh, cool, cool. kind of unusual shape, but that's the, the my suggestion. And I think yeah, that's nice. right about the top end, I think, for like four to five. All right. Okay, so here's mine. That's a cool one. Like, Because I, I, I found a Navitimer on Joma Shop that was just under the limit. Okay. Uh, and so I almost picked that one, but I went mm -hmm. I went a little bit different. So let me get, pull mine up. Okay, so here's mine. Okay, so this is a Zenith uh, Pilot Watch, big uh, Zenith P Big Pilot Chronograph. Um, again, I, I, I know you like aviation watches, so this kind of fits in there. Uh, and then this has the El Primero movement inside of it, so classic uh, movement to get there with the uh, automatic chronograph. Kind of a big date complication down there too. Uh, so this and this is one that I feel like it's versatile enough like the other I was looking at the what the the Zenith uh, type 20 the bigger one uh, With that really the cathedral hands and the really old-school one. I think style wise uh, I, I think that's one you would like but if you're gonna replace your whole collection with one watch I feel like that's not like a very versatile watch uh, mm -hmm. to go with that one. Let me see if I This is the other one. This is the other one I was thinking this is not the one I'm offering you But this is the other one I was thinking is going something like this but I, that's a big, bold watch that I don't know if you'd want to wear that every day. So I back down to this one. I thought then it's a cool brand. Uh, MSR, or not MSR, the Joma Shop price on this one was 4000 Am I allowed to trash talk just to influence Go the for it. Yeah, yeah. 50 meters it's of water. Just, come on yeah. at that price. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> What is your what's what's your Zen got over here? Uh, I don't remember actually. Oh, you don't even yeah. Come on, <laughs> all those pushers. He's, he's probably got like thirty uh, or something in that. that Andre, okay, all right. Well, maybe black and okay, silver let's... electroplated dial. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. All right, let's see what the uh, the chat is going here. What you guys? What other offerings we've got? Uh, let's see. We got a lot of suggestions here. Okay, let's actually, see. Actually, Almighty Ohm. I was looking at the marathon divers today. Joshua Verney nice. offering a Seamaster for the whole collection, mm -hmm. an Omega Speedmaster, 
Mario will give you an Aqua Terra. See, you said Omega, so everyone's going Omega down there. Uh, Almighty Ohm saying Grand Seiko. We need something more specific than that. Yeah, something. Yeah, Omega, Omega, uh, Omega Aqua Terra. Did anyone say a Railmaster? Because I would definitely do that. Oh yeah, uh, that's see. one of my favorites. Too. Yeah, I was I, I was looking Master. at Ball too. I thought that would be a cool one. Uh, mm -hmm. I like Ball. Intramatic Speedmaster. Aqua Terra. Let's see. Omega is the favorite. I don't see. I don't see any Rail Masters in here. Black Hat Velvet has an Aqua Terra on right now. Uh, okay, Rick is going to give you a Cadison C one oh. Tempting. Tempting. Ah uh, okay. no, I prefer Parnas. <laughs> All right, Almighty Ohm. Maybe there's a, a spring drive you could get. Okay. Mm -hmm. And honest watch reviews will give you all the homages you you want. <laughs> you know, just have unlimited homage watches. It looks like he's giving you unlimited AliExpress pass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a yeah subscription. Okay. All right. Hey, so I just I just got on caught on to honest watch reviews. I really enjoy the channel. Yeah, he's got so a cool shout out to cool honest watch there. reviews. Yeah. yeah, guys, go check him out if you're looking for some honest watch reviews. Something more yeah. honest than what we offer you guys. <laughs> okay, so okay. I'm offering you a uh, Zenith uh, Big Pilot Chronograph. Shin's got a Zin 903, 90, okay. kind of Navi Timer esque. And the chat's got a whole ton of Omegas and stuff. Two points. Which one are you going with? Can you, Dave, can you go back to your slides? But okay. go back to the other Zen, or the other Zenith, sorry. Okay. Okay. This happens to be, now I always look at the three-hand version, but mm -hmm. this happens to be one of my absolute favorite watches. Had, had you I, said I had this, feeling. David, David, <laughs> had you said this, and I see I backed it's, down. It's, I was like, it's, it's, you know, it's like, it's too much for a daily watch, 40, 45 millimeters. I got an eight-inch. You know, maybe, I I, maybe I'm, I'm, under, I'm underestimating you here. See, it's yeah, that water. I'm a chunky the other one, yeah, the hundred meter water resistance. Yeah, that's what killed me. And I don't know a lot about Shane's pick. I've I've seen pictures. I've never watched a video or researched it or seen it. But I really like Zen. I really like the Navitimer feel. And uh, from what I can tell, this is a fantastic watch. So I would go with Shane on this one. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so that's that puts us at a problem because that puts us at a tie, tie game now. We got to think yeah. of a tiebreaker. Um, chat, Either any suggestions for how to it. how to break the tie? Let's see. Let's see if I can edit. Someone's this. a steampunk. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could just do rock paper scissor, but that would be lame. Uh, yeah, I should have come up with a more I don't know an extra. Do we have any other extra questions we could throw in here? Okay. All right, Chad, give us some some ideas for a tiebreaker question, something you guys want to know about Alton that we can guess. What else did we have in here? Do you want to – did I tell you how many watches are in my collection? You no, did. I did. 25. Yeah. 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 Don't tell my wife. She thinks it's 10. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is live, right? It will yeah. be recorded. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. All right. Uh, do you have any more suggestions? We could do like a second round of what you would think. I got one more suggestion kind of in the background. But... I don't have a grail watch. I don't have one grail watch, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so I, unfortunately, I'm out of time here because I've got to head out. We're at 9.55 already. So I like uh, – how about we go with Chris Carson? How much would Alton pay for a movement? How much would Alton pay for a movement? Yeah. Oh, an MVMT. Oh, okay. MVMT. I was like, all right, <laughs> let's do it. Okay, how much? How much would Alton pay for an MVMT watch? Gotta write it down. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I gotta lock in a number. Uh, gotta find a blank page. For real though, for actual real, someone's someone's offering you an MVMT watch, and you would actually, and you would. You would buy but it. But I would be buying it to review on the channel. I would be okay, buying sure, it not sure. to wear, but 
Yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get that clear. Or okay, to give to my say... father-in-law. There you go. Right. Okay. I'm going to go 33 bucks. 15. 15. I, the number locked in my head was 12. Ah, uh, so Shane's the all right. Winner. That puts Come Shane up behind. behind this thing. Uh, the game. Okay. And that is the first episode of collection conundrum. I'm sorry, guys. I really got to run because I have another meeting. I got to head to. But that's going to wrap it up for today. So Shane won. He's going to be creating an Instagram post for me to post on my Instagram. So make sure you go follow that. And uh, that's the first episode. So we're going to be doing yeah. at least three episodes of this show. Uh, next time, either me or Shane will be presenting a five watch collection. And Alton will switch seats and become <laughs> one of the hosts to be guessing and playing along. And yeah, so uh, drop some comments down below. Let me know what you guys thought of the show. Make sure you go check out Shane and Alton both on YouTube and on Instagram. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for today. Sorry to, to run this up really quick, but I've got to get over to another meeting, which is why we had to cut this short. Uh, but thank you definitely, Shane and Alton, for doing this with me. I had a lot of fun, and hopefully you guys had yeah. fun watching it. That was a blast. Thanks for everyone who joined us. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully we'll see you guys at the next episode. Uh, we'll be putting some uh, posts and stuff up about that when we get there. But right that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Good night. See you later.